Today, we've gathered some of our Spinnaker support leadership and experts to talk to you about Oracle third-party support and why it's important for your organization to consider. We have Rich Hussey, who's our North America General Manager, Martin Biggs, who's our EMEA Vice President and Managing Director in London, and Bob Ludlam, who's our Director for North America, with Sandy Hewitt, our subject matter expert for third-party support. So Rich, there's a lot of people that are talking about third-party support, and I wondered if you could just share a little bit about what does third-party support mean? Sure, Heather. Um, well, when we refer to third-party support, it's support for applications and databases that replace vendor support that's usually packaged with the software when it's purchased. Um, typically, we see third-party support come with much more comprehensive and responsive support where your response times and resolution times are, are much faster than your traditional support. Another major factor which, you know, which the CFOs love is cost. Um, companies can typically save anywhere from 50 to 60% um, compared to what they pay the software publisher. And then when you factor in forced upgrades, customization support, and self-support, the savings can actually exceed upwards around 80%. So you'll also get much more personalized service by having more experienced support engineers who really know your account and all the issues that you're faced with. With and you know, just one one other thing that I wanted to point out is that um, Gartner Group has stated in a recent report that third-party support is expected to reach about a billion dollars this year. So those companies that are offering this type of service have a lot of opportunity ahead of them. That's great. And it's great to understand that it's not just cost savings. There's a lot of benefits beyond the cost savings. Um, Sandy, I know that, you know, you've been with Spinnaker for some time now, and Spinnaker is one of these third-party support providers. In the Oracle space, you know, what does Spinnaker support? Yes, good question, Heather. We, um, our team is designed to support, from a technical support standpoint, Oracle database, middleware, as well as all of the application stack. And we've been recognized as the premier uh, provider in this space um, and really have assisted a lot of organizations through time and through the inception of our company to help them evaluate what this would mean, specifically to some of the points that Rich just mentioned and why this is so valuable. Because like you just said, Heather, cost is definitely one factor, but it's not everything, right? And our team does an excellent job of helping technical staff become comfortable with a model such as this one. And we can certainly talk more about that at a, at a later time in this discussion. Right. And that makes me think about those organizations that are on legacy systems. Um, can Spinnaker also support those as well? Absolutely. In fact, that's one of the advantages to the program that we offer is, is really giving that control back to you and your team or the team of the company and allowing them to make those decisions based on their investment, right? They've made the investment initially. The nice thing about this particular marketplace currently is it's extremely mature. These are technologies that organizations have ran for some time. They've done extremely well, they're stable, and now they're kind of asking themselves, what's next? Well, lean on us, lean on our team to help you through that transitionary process. We're happy to help you with the support required for as long as you wanna run your technology rather than forced upgrades like the uh, OEM might be asking you to do, or maybe some other forced pressures you might have, you know, our model is designed to give you that empowerment back so that you can feel comfortable to run that technology as long as you need to. And that should give a lot of these organizations that are on these legacy systems some confidence. Um, I know. I'm in. Yeah. Um, Bob, I'm really interested in understanding if an organization is evaluating third-party support um, you know, and they wanted to go with Spinnaker, what does it look like contractually? Sure. So, you know, the, the process really starts almost before we even get involved, which, you know, from, from a third party support perspective, I think the greatest thing companies have to deal with is change management, right? There's, there's a paradigm shift in terms of how people are accustomed to doing this. And it's our team's responsibility to help educate an organization that's considering that move to third-party support on exactly what that means to your organization. So there are a lot of elements that go into that. Um, we help guide customers through that process. We ask those, uh, we help answer those questions that they might have around, you know, how do I handle tax and regulatory updates? What does security uh, mean to me? 
Uh, all those kind of things are, are things that we would engage with a customer. We'll take them through that educational process. This is a solution that's not obviously right for every customer, but when it is right, as, as Rich has alluded to and, and Sandy, it, it can come at significant savings with a superior level of service. And it's our job to help educate and guide customers through that process. Yeah, and I and imagine that it, 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 the education piece is something that uh, Spinnaker Support spends a lot of time on um, because organizations are considering third party support without maybe having that background and knowledge about what it means. Um, I'm curious, Martin, if you can speak a little bit to what a company might be thinking about as far as, you know, are, are we going to lose anything by going to third party support? Yeah, and it's what's the trick? You know, what, what are we missing out on? What's the catch? Um, it's normally, uh, it's too good to be true. So yes, by all means, you, you're going to not have access to my Oracle support anymore, which means you're not going to get security patches um, and other updates. Um, and actually, um, we would argue on my Oracle support, you, you get a, a better service because you're free to a level four engineer on average within four minutes rather than having to wait sometimes days. So we believe looking after and supporting the software is our job, not yours. You shouldn't be self-supporting. And from a security point, we actually guarantee that we're going to improve your security posture. So not having access to patches is not a problem. And we're going to talk about that, I'm sure, a little bit later, Heather, as well. The one area which we can't replace is new versions of the software that become available after you move a service to us. And that is something where if a client is absolutely on a roadmap with Oracle on premise on the licensed software, then it might not be right to move to third party support. However, Right now, most of the new development is all in the cloud, which is a completely different paradigm to being licensed. And that therefore means what really is the roadmap on premise? And the, and the roadmap is pretty limited. On database, the next major long-term release comes out this year. And after that, there is nothing announced. Mo all the development that has been announced is on the cloud. And you can say the same for virtually every other version of, uh, on type of Oracle software. So a really interesting time when the one thing that we can't deliver is actually the one thing which Oracle also isn't doing. What about organizations that are considering upgrades? Should they be concerned about maybe some, what they might be losing by going to third party support? I, I mean, look, let's be clear. If the version of the software they want to upgrade to is currently available, then that's what all of our clients do all the time. Um, and we help clients to replatform and uh, move to other versions or even migrate to the cloud, wherever it might be, you know, um, hyperscalers. That's done with their existing versions of software that they legitimately have access to. And we help them build the archives so they can do all of that. It's only for new versions that come after uh, they move the service to us, which they will not be able to get access to. Okay, so uh, organizations really need to think about what is their roadmap? What is that going to look like um, when considering third party support? That's right. Yeah. I, I think the biggest challenge for any organization is in change management. Um, getting the organization comfortable with doing something different than maybe they've been accustomed to doing for eight, 10, 12, 15 years. Right, they they rely on the self-support components of of Oracle. Their teams are trained to utilize, you know, that method to help try to resolve their own problems. That can take a lot of time from resources within your organization that could be allocated to something else. Um, so I I think that's a a component that that all organizations need to look at and consider as as they're looking at at third-party support. Um, you know, uh, as as Martin mentioned, from a security perspective, from a tax and regulatory perspective, we've been doing this since 2008. We have uh, proven uh, processes and methodologies to address those kind of areas. So really, I think we've done a very good job of mitigating customers' risks in moving to this solution or this alternative. So it, it sounds like a lot of organizations can take advantage of third-party support, but there's got to be some companies that can't consider it or shouldn't consider it. Look, in my opinion, all companies should be considering third-party support for a wide range of the reasons we've already discussed. However, there are in a few cases, um, you know, a lot has to do with timing as an example. If you take a company that just renewed their support with Oracle, they just paid a big bill, they obviously wouldn't be a candidate now, but could explore it in the next cycle. Also, companies that are going through a merger or an acquisition may not be the right time to consider third-party support as they probably are working through a number of license entanglements, as an example. But however, in each of these situations, um, you know, there may be other business segments or other platforms where, you know, maybe a company should explore third-party support for the reasons we've already discussed. So I think there's a wide range of opportunities to 
explore third party support depending on the individual circumstance. So tell me a little bit, Sandy, you've been, you know, at Spinnaker for a while now, and, and I'd love to understand a little bit more about, you know, a lot of organizations are on the sustaining support with Oracle. Would somebody that's on the sustaining support be a good candidate for Oracle, um, you know, for our Oracle's third party support? Yes, the, the, the immediate answer to your question, Heather, is yes. You know, the, the bigger picture to this is, quite honestly, there's an opportunity for many of or, many organizations running various types of maintenance programs with Oracle. For example, Oracle establishes a lifetime um, support policy that works in hand in hand with their technical support policy. And as a result, they offer three primary support models. One is the premier um, support model, which in essence is when you acquire the licenses initially. That generally tends to lead to a 22% um, of the license fees in terms of what you can allocate in terms of spend for your first year for support. And each year after that, it's about an average of 4%, 5%. And then you take it into the next level, which is extended support. And that depends on you know how much further into the, into the process you are with the technology, for example. And that can probably be a 10 to 20% premium. But then when you move into sustaining support, which is really about your question here, what's interesting about sustaining support is that we'll find organization running more of their legacy products on that particular support model with Oracle. At the surface level, everything seems to be status quo and the fees are still significant. But what we found is the limitations associated with what sustaining support offers. For example, just a couple to name a couple would be um, no critical patch update. And you probably heard earlier from Martin that um, we have the ability to help you secure a stronger security platform and methodology associated with security. And we can help you through that. And so it's an alternative to what you may be experiencing if you're on sustaining support. So that's just one example. There's others, obviously, um, but we'd love to have the opportunity to take you through it in more detail. But sustaining support in those organizations running that particular support model are definitely candidates for this um, Spinnaker support Oracle model. Um, can you, Sandy, give us an example of an organization that, you know, has been on the sustaining support and then considered third-party support because they realized, you know, that they weren't getting the support they really thought they were getting? Yes, that's a really good question, Heather. Um, just for example, there's been an insurance company that came to us, and one of the things that they were noticing in terms of their entire transformational roadmap associated with Oracle from a database standpoint was that we had, they had certain databases they were already migrating to the cloud, for example, but other databases that were sitting on 10G and 11G, and because those were under sustained support, although there was a supplementary type of support model being offered by the OEM, in this case Oracle, they, they valued what we brought to the table in our full support model significantly. So not only did they reduce costs, but they really saw the value in what we can bring to their team for the 10G and 11G. And certainly we could take you through that in more detail, but there, there's some significant differences there to help out. Mm -hmm. And Martin, tell us a little bit about those highly regulated industries like the telcos and banking. How does Spinnaker support address and improve security for these highly regulated industries? Yeah, and, and this is an area really of strength for us. It differentiates us in the marketplace, both from others who do similar to us and also from Oracle themselves, partly from what Sandy was saying earlier that will now support all of the versions of the software, not just the latest. Oracle's in a really strange situation where it's supporting the fewest number of versions in its history at the moment, uh, yet it's charging customers a ridiculous amount of money. So. We, we now have um, customers who are regulated in G7 and G20 economies, in banking, in telco, in uh, critical national infrastructure. Um, and, and these customers, whilst they might not like to publicly talk about it, they're very happy to talk to prospective clients as well. And it's something that demonstrates the rigor of our security story. For every single CVE that's announced, if you know what that means, that's great. If you don't, it doesn't matter. Um, we will have a very clear mitigation workaround that is demonstrated to the auditor and the regulator that allows clients to be uh, uh, able to meet those auditory environments. And I think that's that's pretty critical because that's something that you can't do by just deploying a black box. And it's something which is allowing us to to have these clients uh, on our books today. And it does, and it means that there are very very few clients out there 
that uh, this is not a relevant offering for? We are the only provider in this space that offers the ultimate support guarantee as a method to ensure not only from a discussion point perspective, but also we put it in writing for you and we help you through that so that you can see and feel comfortable knowing that our, our methodology and our processes that have been put in place thus far since our inception of doing this type of support are solid. And we're here to protect you, protect our company and protect everything associated with the process um, obviously, because we don't own the code and neither do, do the companies out there. So happy to talk more about what that would look like or mean um, in the appropriate time for that. And, and that in and of itself, I think, gives a lot of organizations um, comfort and assurance that their party support with Spinnaker. Um, so, Bob, tell me a little bit about organizations who are considering some of this new modern functionality like chat GPT or, or blockchain. Um, can the product still be enhanced, even if that's something they're trying to consider? Yeah, it's a, also a great question. And, you know, I've been in this uh, this software space, third party support for a number of years. And there have been a number of things that have, you know, predated uh, chat GPT and, and blockchain in terms of new capabilities and technologies that, that are brought to the market. And what I like to tell prospects is that one of the things that's significantly different when you move to third party support is you're you're no longer under that that guise or that requirement from the software vendor to continuously upgrade your software to remain compliant. And what that means is that you can stabilize the core components of, of ERP uh, and even your database layer and then surround those with other technologies. And, and there are a number of players in, in chat GPT, uh, blockchain that offer solutions that surround the, the core components. And, and let you take a best of breed approach of actually delivering those functionalities with with uh, capabilities that are specifically designed around maybe your industry or your type of business. So it creates an actually an increased level of flexibility in terms of how they look at some of these things. There's also the ability then to customize within within your core components as well. And again, I think the the the, the lessons learned over time is. Don't customize your software if you can avoid it because it makes upgrades incredibly painful. Well, once you stabilize on the core, your ability then to introduce customizations that have business value to your organization is now enhanced. And so you can actually take advantage of more of these kind of technologies. I love that. Um, and I would love to have us talk a little bit more about the, the cost savings that you know, comes with going with Spinnaker. And you know, I, I would be really interested to understand from your perspective, Sandy, um, how much can an organization save from an OPEX standpoint? Fantastic question. Cost savings, of course, cost containment reduction are all at the forefront of companies right now, specifically in the time that we're in with the marketplace and some of the political aspects in the um, market as well. But at the end of the day, just from an initial conversation standpoint, we are comfortable in sharing that a 50% reduction over what you're spending currently with Oracle annually for support is, is really what you can anticipate. These are hard dollar cost savings, um, not soft dollar, but hard dollar. Very important to note there. And once we get a chance to spend a little time together, you know, it, it's one by which we'll understand requirements. We'll go into detail with the needs of the organization, the, the objectives that are so critical to the success of something like this. And, and on average can save about 62%. Uh, Rich alluded to it earlier, you know, 50 to 60% it tends to be the range. Can we get a little more aggressive? It really just depends on the overall needs and the assessment between our companies. And hopefully by the nature of this discussion, folks can see that our approach is very consultative. It's one by which we believe it's important to share all of the important aspects associated with an evaluation like this and allow you to determine what's best for your organization at the right critical time. That's that's fantastic. And I think that savings is, is significant because you get better support with great savings combined. Um, I, I think the organizations may be thinking, so this is great. Is there a good time to move to third party support? Is there a better time? Um, Rich, maybe you can speak to that a little bit. Sure, Heather. Um, you know, I think it's never too early for an organization to start doing their due diligence and getting educated on third party support. You know, there's a lot to consider around how they'll be, how third party support providers will 
provide that support as well as security implications. So doing that due diligence in advance is, is really important. Um, it's also obviously best to transition before your support ends with the vendor. So you won't have to be on the hook for a, a large bill from the software publisher. Um, you should also really check your support agreements to determine what kind of advance notice is required by the vendor. So you're not stuck in a, in a specific window where you may be on the hook to actually renew. Um, other reasons when to move to third party support really depends on the specific needs and timeline. For example, when a, when a product has, has reached the end of its life cycle, it may be a good idea to explore third party support at that point. Or when vendor support or a product becomes too expensive to maintain in house, especially when you're not seeing the value in the money you're spending, you may want to take a look at third party support as well. Um, you know, only one last example I would have is if you find your staff is unable to provide adequate support or resolve issues quickly or in a timely manner, the third party support may be a good option as well. So there's, you know, there's a lot of education that needs to take place. But again, every, every company has a different situation on when to actually engage with a third party support provider. I just add to that. And I think, you know, co cost is clearly uh, something that everybody looks at and it's a, it's a very simple and obvious calculation, as Sandy kind of alluded to or talked to in, in her segment. But, you know, customers come to us oftentimes because they're looking to, can I fund something different? I need to do some cost savings, that sort of stuff. But as they get into the analysis, and certainly as they become customers of Spinnaker, it is the service level, the service quality, and the superior level of things that we can offer around global tax regs, security vulnerability, the personalization and the flexibility around those services are what really drive customers to stay with Spinnaker, perhaps even longer than they had anticipated in the transitionary period. So, um, you know, while, while cost is certainly very important, I think these other elements are the key things that drive customers to, to Spinnaker and, and quite, quite honestly keep them as customers of Spinnaker for extended periods of time. So true. So we've talked a lot about uh, third-party support, how Spinnaker support can help organizations. Martin, would you just maybe summarize what third-party support can mean for these organizations? Yeah, uh, you've got your hard savings. We've talked about that to death. Um, Sandy talked about the soft savings. Uh, we asked recently a retail bank what they would have done differently. Um, and they said, if only we'd stopped upgrading straight away, we would have saved another 25 million in the first year. So there's that. Um, but actually, we're liberating uh, clients' IT architecture. They can now do what they want, when they want with their software. We're not anti-Oracle. You can stay with Oracle for as long as you want on your software, or you can migrate parts away. It's up to you. That's what's now important. It's now under your control. And then finally, the real value, which when you know clients are working with us at the best, they see us as an extended part of their team. We're the specialists that really understand the technology, and we can provide, as part of the service, advisory onto key strategic plans they've got around their um, Oracle architecture. Um, so it's all of that together becomes a really compelling story. And it, like we said earlier, it sounds too good to be true. You wrapped that up well. So to the audience, thank you for joining us. And we hope this has been valuable to you and that you've learned more about the benefits of third-party support for Oracle and obviously Spinnaker support. Um, if you'd like to learn more about third-party support and evaluate it for your organization, go to spinnakersupport.com. And any of these wonderful experts and leaders will be happy to answer questions. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.